Now, believe it or not, snacking can be healthy. You don't have to arrive at every meal absolutely ravenous. But many people think of snacks as just junk food. And the trick here is balanced snacks. These should leave you feeling totally in control around food, something that many of us struggle with. So today I'm here to show you how to create a balanced snack that's tasty, nutritious, and at the end, I'm going to address whether or not lower calorie snacks are in fact better for you. If you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. Now I get asked a lot if snacking is healthy and if you do one quick Google search on the topic, you're going to get a lot of conflicting answers. But I am a firm believer that food is fuel and snacks are not only important, but necessary for many of us. Like with almost everything in nutrition, whether or not you choose to include snacks is going to depend on you and your unique needs. And the unglamorous truth is that we do all respond differently to different styles of eating. But in general, I do consider snacking to be a healthy habit because for one, snacks can add essential nutrients to your diet. Like for example, women, we are at higher risk of osteoporosis and snacking on a yogurt is a great way to get in another source of calcium daily. Well-balanced snacks can also help maintain stable blood sugar levels. And this can prevent hunger throughout the day and help you feel more in control than around food when you are eating. And for some people with more sensitive digestive systems, small meals and snacks may be more manageable than large meals. Plus, if chosen well, they can taste amazing and add joy to your day. Now, all that aside, grabbing a handful of crackers or cookies though is not going to cut it. Even just a slice of toast or a piece of fruit probably won't cut it either. Sure, that apple might help curb your appetite for an hour, but what happens after that? So we want to make sure that the snacks that we are eating are not only accessible, but beneficial to our body. And that is why today we're gonna to talk all about the balanced snack formula. And following this formula is key to feeling energized, satisfied and full throughout the whole day. Now I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel so I can continue making more videos like this one. And if you're looking for healthy, high protein recipe ideas, make sure to follow me over on Instagram. So if you find yourself that you are reaching for snacks all afternoon, it probably is because the snacks that you're going for are not balanced. So when I'm getting my clients to create the perfect healthy balanced snack, this is what we do. We want to get at least two of these nutrients, protein, fiber, and fat. And if you can, all three. Now, any of these components on their own, they may fill you up for a short time, but when you pair them together, that's where they get really powerful. Protein is key here because it helps us feel satisfied after meals and it suppresses our hunger hormones. The fiber rich carbs provide us with energy and most of us are not eating enough fiber to begin with anyway. And then fats add satisfaction, but they also slow down the digestion process. So when you consume fats along with carbohydrates, take having a slice of toast with peanut butter as an example, the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream is slowed. And this helps prevent rapid rises and falls in your blood sugar levels. Now I do want to emphasize though that your blood sugar is going up and down. It is normal. There's a lot of hype online about it at the moment. These fluctuations are a sign that your body is working. There's no need for all the fear and negativity around it. But with your blood sugars, what you're looking for is slow and steady rises and falls rather than big spikes and big drops. And this is where pairing these nutrients really comes into play. But since fats are more calorie dense, remember that a little goes a long way with foods like your peanut butter and your avocados. And the last but equally important part of building a balanced snack is of course, flavor. Remember to always include foods that you enjoy. So let's get practical. An easy way is to first start with just a food that you love and then level it up by adding one of these nutrients. But if you want more of a step-by-step -step guide, this is what I typically will do. So in general, I recommend starting with a protein. It could be something like a Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is an excellent source of protein. Just be careful that you don't get Greek style because that is not as high in protein as the actual Greek yogurt. I like to go for plain versions because then I can sweeten them myself if I want something sweet, or I can also add them into savory dishes too. And this is one of my favorite ways to get in protein. And it's a really good source of calcium for your bones too. Now, if you're plant-based, you could go for something like a soy yogurt instead. Cottage cheese is another really good one. And if you don't like the texture, you can blend it. I will be honest, it doesn't sound that appealing, but it surprisingly works well in a lot of dishes. So don't 
completely diss it and not give it a try. It's really nice on crackers and in salads too, and you can use it to make dips or sauces. I've even seen really good recipes for muffins online using it, so I'm gonna be giving that a try soon. Hemp seeds are another really good source of protein, and you can sprinkle them on so many different things. They're very versatile. Then you have, of course, things like eggs or even dairy milk or soy milk. Hummus and cheese sticks are also good options too. So after your protein, the next thing I recommend is adding your fiber rich carbohydrate. And if you're unsure maybe what this might be, think of it as basically any food that comes from a plant. So it could be a piece of fruit, it could be vegetables like carrot sticks or celery or sliced up red peppers or sliced up bell peppers, or it could be a spoon of peanut butter. So there's a lot of foods that actually serve dual purposes here. But thinking about that formula, starting with your protein, adding your plant-based food, and then if you can, a bonus is if you get some healthy fats in there too. But the last important part here is satisfaction. You want your snack to not only just fill you up, but also taste good, and that it's something that you enjoy eating. Sometimes that might mean adding something a little extra, like a tablespoon of chocolate chips into your Greek yogurt, or having tortilla chips with your guacamole. Don't be afraid to add flavor or the foods that you love if it will help you feel satisfied. For example, I made these really nice white chocolate and raspberry muffins lately, and I really wanted them the other day for a snack. So what I did was I had my muffin, but I also had some Greek yogurt on the side. This added a little bit more protein to the snack, and then it satisfied me for the next two hours, three hours, until it was time for dinner. It's just about getting creative, and this way you can still include the foods that you enjoy. Now, just like I advocate for taking some time to plan out your meals for the week, it's also really useful to take some time to plan out your snacks. This will help you avoid reaching for unhealthy options when you're hungry. And variety is key here, so don't be afraid to mix it up. Try different fruits, try different vegetables. Mix and match different protein sources. This way you're gonna get an array of different nutrients as well to fuel your body in the best possible way. Now, are lower calorie snacks healthier? Because grocery stores are full of these little mini chocolate bars for 100 calories or these treat sized versions of your favorite foods. Now, while sometimes it might be true that they're the better option, that's not always the case. In fact, as I mentioned in this video, like looking at the rice cakes as an example, it may be quite the opposite. Low calorie snacks, they often only include one macronutrient and it's usually a carbohydrate that's not very high in fiber. So you might eat it and find yourself hungry again after 30 minutes. And then an hour later, you're reaching for another snack. And this can lead to a cycle of snacking. And it's one of the top reasons that some people feel they lose control and they can't stop snacking. So instead of focusing on calories, try to balance your snacks with the tips we discussed today. Now, if you're having a craving for something sweet, for example, and you're experiencing taste hunger and you can recognize that this is what it is, sometimes these portion controlled snacks can be useful because the purpose of them in this moment is just to satisfy that want for something sweet. It's not to actually fill you up and keep you full until, until dinner. So in scenarios like this, where it's just the taste that you're after, they can be beneficial. But if they're your go-to snacks, where the aim is to keep you satisfied between meals, they're often not the best option. Now, I hope this video was useful and I'm working on a video at the moment for high protein snack ideas. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that one. If you enjoyed this video, you will definitely enjoy my video about the healthy foods that actually aren't. It covers a lot of snacking mistakes. Thank you very much for watching. Stay happy and healthy and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.